Statistics and Excel, combining two histograms on one chart, part number one. Get ready, taking a deep breath, holding it in for 10 seconds, looking forward to a smooth, soothing Excel. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But, but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like this CPA thinking cap, for example. CPA thinking CAP, you see what we did with like with the letters? And this CPA thinking cap is not just for CPAs either. Anyone can and should have at least one, possibly multiple CPA thinking caps. Why? Because based on our scientific survey of five people, all of whom directly profit from the sale of these CPA thinking caps, wearing this CPA thinking cap without a doubt, according to the survey, increases accounting productivity tenfold. Yeah, at least. Yeah, apparently the hat actually channels like accounting energy from the quantum field ether directly into your head, allowing you to navigate spreadsheets faster. It's kind of like how in like the Matrix when Neo learns Kung Fu, or at least that's what the scientific survey's saying. So get one, because the scientific survey participants could really use some extra cash. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Here we are in Excel. If you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay because we'll basically build this from a blank worksheet. But if you do have access to this workbook, three tabs down below, example, practice blank, example, in essence, answer key, practice tab having pre-formatted cells so you can get right to the heart of the practice problem, blank tab just having the data within it so we can practice formatting cells as we work through the practice problem. Also note, if you don't have access to the data set, you can take a look at Kaggle, K-A-G-G-L-E dot com as a source to look for some sample data sets. This one's related to height. We're gonna go to the tab on the left, the example tab to get an idea of what we will be doing. We'll format our data into a table, calculate the average, and then we'll make a histogram from that data. Given the fact that it's data about height, we would expect it to be somewhat bell-shaped uh, as it is here. Then in order to put two sets of data together, we're gonna recreate our histogram with a bar type chart. So we'll format it in this format so we can play, make a bar chart, the bar chart being easier to overlay another chart on top of. And then we'll take our current data set and we'll kind of imagine that this is for men, and then we'll do another calculation to make a similar data set for women, just so we have some numbers to practice with. And then we could imagine that if we put those two data sets together, it would look something like this. But what we really want to do is try to create something like this. So now you've got basically the two histograms that you can see are distinct from each other and kind of offsetted uh, as we can see here. All right, so let's go to the blank tab. We'll build this in a, in a few presentations. I'm gonna get rid of this Kaggle in the middle here. And let's start off by just uh, formatting our entire worksheet. That's our, that's our starting point typically. So I will then select the tab up top, uh, the triangle, right click on the worksheet on the highlighted or selected area, format the cells. I'm gonna go into the currency negative numbers to be bracketed and red, get rid of the dollar sign. And here you'll note that there's multiple decimal places. So maybe I wanna keep the decimal, but I'll round it to two decimal places, which will round off some of these numbers simply to do two decimals. So I'm gonna say, okay, that looks good. Then I'll bold the whole thing, home tab, font group, and embolden the whole thing. All right, I'm gonna hold control and scroll up a little bit. So I'm currently at 265 on the zoom in. Now I'm gonna create a table around our data set. So I'm gonna to go to the insert tab to do that, tables and create a table. And so it's selecting the entire data set with the dancing ants doing a mamba 
around it. You can't see, again, you can't see their hips shaking or anything, but if you were to zoom in, they're totally, uh, their hips are shaking and they're like, they're getting into it when they're dancing. So just, it's not like a march. You would think they're marching, but they're not. They're totally into, they're totally like dancing. Any case, I'm gonna put a space in between these two. I'm gonna make this a little bit smaller and then wrap the text up top. So we're gonna to go to the home tab and uh, alignment, let's wrap the text and center it, alignment and center. So now we could sort the data if we wanted to. And, uh, and this is, we have a fairly long data set. Notice that this is a pretty extended amount of a sample of uh, data. So it's still a sample you know, of data. So we're taking all of this data set uh, as, as a sample of data. And if we had, it's down to uh, 25,000 you know, out of the population, right, uh, of a population. So if we take that, and we make a histogram from it. So I'm just going to select the whole data set by putting my cursor on the drop down. Now I've got all the data selected and we can go to the histogram we've seen in the past. Just go to the insert tab, charts group, drop down on the histogram and we want a histogram. Boom. And it makes a pretty nice uh, histogram here. I'm going to get rid of the title and then as we would expect with data like this, that's ab about, I'm gonna make it a little larger, height, we get a nice distribution because we have a very large you know, sample of data that, that we have. So we've got the buckets that have been made down below. So we've got our, our uh, buckets. And so 60.28 to 60.51, I believe these are in inches. So if you wanted to you know, divide by 12 to get the feet or whatever, so if we wanted to convert to feet, you know, and, and so the, so this middle point seems to be around 68. So, so again, if you wanted to convert this to feet, you'd be something like 60, uh, 68 divided by 12, you know, 5.67. Uh, so in any case, uh, that's here. So, all right. So then. So now note when I when I look at this plot, it's difficult to add another data set basically on top of this one, right? If I select the entire data set, then then you know I can add another set of data set in it. But I, if I want to lie something on top of it, it might be useful to uh, for us to format the data in such a way that we can make a a uh, a bar type of of uh, a column chart instead of a histogram. So we wanna make a histogram using this tool instead of this tool, and then we'll be able to possibly put the two uh, sets of data on top of each other. So let's first think about how to do that. How can I recreate this histogram? Well, I can, I can look at my data sets down here. I'm gonna make a skinny B column. Let's make a skinny B, and I'm gonna make this a little bit wider and I'm gonna mirror my buckets down here. So I've got the buckets from 6028 to 6051, and then uh, 60.74 to 60.97. We could change those bucket sizes, by the way, by clicking on the histogram and then adjust the bend width if we so choose, which is currently at 0.23 difference, and we have 65 bends. So let's imagine down here that I'm gonna have then Let's do one more down. I'm going to say 60.28, and then it's going to uh, 60.51. So I'm just copying this 60.28 to 60.51. And then the bend width we can see is 23 difference. So if I go up, this is going to be equal to the one above it, plus 0.23 should give us to uh, the 60.51 which is basically the ending bucket over here. And then I'm gonna do the same thing this way. I'm gonna say this equals this uh, plus 20.23. And so I'm gonna select those two and copy them down. And so now I've got, now I've got the 6074 here to the 6097. And so if I keep copying that down, I wanna copy it down till I get to the 75 to the 7523. So I'm gonna put my cursor on these two. I'm gonna put my cursor on the fill handle and drag it down 
And so if I let go, I'm at 65. I'm gonna keep on going till I get to 68. And so I'm gonna to go to, there's 69, 71. We've got a lot of buckets here, a lot of buckets. So we'll keep going down to 75. So 75 is the end point, is that right? It goes from 75 to 75, 23. So if I copy one more down, 75 to 75, 23. So there's our buckets. So now what I'd like to do is make a similar kind of uh, uh, tab that's gonna be on the X axis that looks like this, having the range. So we can do that with a, with a little formula. I could type in here, uh, if I don't want a formula, I could put, put this apostrophe and then I could say this is going to go from 60.28 and then space or and then dash maybe 60.51. However, I, that's kind of tedious to copy that, to type that all the way down. So what I, what I could do is do a formula which has text in it by saying equals and I'm going to point to this cell and then say we want to say and because I want to connect it to another cell not add it or divide it or create a function to it but connect it and then I'm going to put a per, uh, quotations for the text that's going to go in the middle which is just going to be a dash end the quotation and then we're going to say and and then this one so what this is saying is equals pick up what's in cell C17 and and just put what's in there in it and then and connect it to because I have a text field we put the quotations around it a dash between the two and connect it to what is in cell d17 which is that 6059 and enter so there we have it I'm gonna make this a little bit larger so there we have it now we might end up with a problem as I copy this down but that's my general formula I can take this and copy it down and so there we have that, boom. Notice it did something funny down here. So now we've got this issue that it did something uh, funny. So how can we fix that? We could, we could say that we wanted to round it uh, to get rid of these decimal places. So for example, if I go into this uh, data right here, if, if, I was to add, if I was to add decimals, it's coming up to something that's actually not exactly rounded to two decimals. So I would like to tell Excel, hey, round it to just two spaces. So the way to do that, I'm gonna double click on this cell. I'm gonna go to the front of it and put in front of it a round function. So I'm gonna say round and then brackets. So now I'm putting that in front and now I've got my argument. This, there's the argument, which is correct. And then comma, I want you to round it and then to round it to two decimal places we use a 10. So the 10 represents rounding it to two decimals. So I'm going to then close that up and by the way when you use this function it gets a little bit tricky to use the 10 you know how many decimals you're rounding to but once you get used to it then you know you can it's not too bad to round that out. So then I'm going to do the same thing for the first one here. I'm going to put round uh, uh, round brackets and then comma and a 10 brackets and enter so now we've rounded those two datas and if I if I copy that cell all the way down it looks like a little bit more complex of a formula but then it takes care of that rounding problem all right something happened here I'm going to copy this one down Okay, I think that's good. Okay, and then I'm also going to do the rounding thing on this one. I should do it from the top down, but I'm going to say equals uh, equals round. Whoop, hold on a second. Uh, round brackets. Uh, scroll into the left and then comma 10 brackets. And then this one double click round brackets going to the left comma 10. all right so there we have it so now i'm going to make column e a little bit wider so we can see all the numbers in there now that i have my my brackets i want to then select this the data from this data set 
that is in between each of these buckets and it's used so we have the beginning and end so I'd like to have a formula that's going to say something like if uh, the the number is above this number but below this number then you want it to be in this bucket uh, and so also just realize that you could see this number is the same so we want it to be uh, including if it's 60 51 we want it in the top bucket and the bottom bucket if it's 60 51 we don't want it here we want it upper in the top bucket all right so let's do our formula in uh, e17 it's gonna say equals count if and I'm gonna say ifs with an s double click the formula here's our criteria bar so if we could highlight that we could see the criteria criteria range I'm going to select the entire range up top with the drop down there's our range comma next argument is uh, the actual criteria so we're going to say that this needs to be I'm going to use a greater than so I have to put the quotations quotation greater than quotation and then and I've got to use an and connecting it to the 60 so it's got to be greater than the 60 that's our first argument and then comma the second criteria that we needs to have is the same range criteria range 2 same range selecting the entire range and then the criteria for that range comma is going to be criteria 2 has to be then uh, quotations less than or equal to meaning if it lands on 60.51 it's going to be included here close up the quotations shift uh, 7 for the and and then finally the 60.51 so kind of an intimidating function but it gives you uh, a nice calculation we can copy that down and it should copy the relative references all the way down we could do that by just double clicking and it should copy the relative formulas all the way down so this is picking up everything that is greater than not equal to but greater than the 6281 up to and including the 63.04 then we can use this data set to create a histogram but with the bar chart so now what we want to have is on on the x-axis we want this stuff and then this on the y so I'm going to select these two columns and I'll scroll back up to where I want the histogram to be before I enter it and then insert tab and we go to the charts and graphs histogram there's our histogram boom now it doesn't look whoops oh, sorry not a histogram <laughs> wait a second uh insert tab charts this time we don't want the histogram we want the bar chart all right the bar chart we made a histogram with the bar chart so let's move it down here <clears throat> and then i'll close this for a second and make this a little bit larger and so now we can kind of see these on top of each other so here's the histogram we made by just inserting a histogram and then here's the one we made uh, with the bar charts so there we have it and so then if I uh, select the data if I double click on the data here uh, and sometimes we might want to make the width smaller to like uh, like 10 maybe so now it looks more like histogrammy <laughs> right and we could add uh we could add our data fields so i could go up top it's sometimes it's a little finicky to add the data numbers so if you go up top to the uh uh so i'm in the the chart design and then then the ads up top and i want to be adding then the chart labels that i could put in here or up top there's our chart labels uh we could put them up top here so if we had a wider chart be a little bit we need a quite wide chart to pull in that many data labels but you know we could put those in there uh we might format them maybe well i'll keep it like that we'll make a really wide 
chart. So pull this out here. I'm going to hold sh shift scroll in a bit and just see if we can make it wide enough. We could get rid of the decimals is what I was thinking on the data labels. But in any case, that gives us an idea. I, we could do that up here too. If I pulled this histogram to the right and we wanted to kind of compare the data labels on this one, I could go into the design and the charts and we can access the data labels, put them up top here. So this one nicely uh, rounded for us. So in any case, there we go. And so here's the data label. So if you select the, if you select the data and you go into uh, the, the labels over here and into numbers and you format it from general to a number formatting, then you can remove uh, the decimal places, which could be a, a little bit cleaner. I'm gonna remove the title up top. So there we have a histogram uh, that we made with the bar chart. Now, so, so, so next time what we will do, and notice the heights are, this one I just expanded, it's a little bit taller this way. So, I mean, I can do that, you know, it squishes it down a bit so that it looks, you know, similar to our two histograms up top. But, uh, so that's what we'll do. Now, next time, what we'll do is think about, well, what if I had a second set of data and then I wanted to create, you know, two histograms that are kind of on top of each other. That's why this this tool might be useful. So we'll experiment and continue on with that next time.